when we'll you look at the ingredients, look at the ingredients. Yeah. It looked like a chemical soup. Yep. Yeah. The first ingredient is like water and then it's uh, canola oil. Oof. And canola oil is one of the worst oils you can have. So just, uh, just to clarify, because you're not saying that meat just is bad. You're just saying that most of the meat that we consume is processed, which is bad for us. So like if I, because I'm from Nigeria, right? Gotcha. And we've, I've seen my family like kill a cow right in front of me or kill a goat or chicken right in front of me, take it upstairs, pick it, boil it, and we eat that. Right. Right. So in situations like that, what's your, appro- what's your um, outlook on that type yeah. of thing? So I, I want you to think about it. Mm-hmm. You ha- Have you been back to Nigeria? Mm-hmm. Okay. So when you know you go to Nigeria, they got the same health issues we got right here. Mm-hmm. There's no different. High blood pressure, mm-hmm. diabetes, it's the same. Okay. And what do we, what do you Nigerians eat? Most of my best friends mm-hmm. are Nigerian. Mm-hmm. I know. And what do they eat a lot of? Rice. A Go. whole bunch of rice, Go. a whole bunch of meat. Meat, yep. You see what I'm saying? You go to the Maasai tribe that's in Kenya and Tanzania. You know what they primarily eat? The Maasai warriors? Milk and meat. You know their age life expectancy? 68. Like 45. Oh, wow. You know what they typically die of? Parasites. Parasites. Oh, no. Okay, so you got to understand. I'm not trying to like, I'm not here to tell people what to do. I'm just here to educate people. So talk to me about the blue zones. Okay. Right? Okay. What do they like that? What do they do different? You got to just jump to Okay. Okay. He just jealous. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but uh, talking about the blue zone, like what? What the people on? Is, is it a specific part of Asia? Is it J- Japan? How? Does, I don't, I'm not sure exactly yeah, what the so area is. But there's five blue zones around the world. You have Costa Rica. You have Sardinia in Italy. Okay. You have one in Greece, Icaria. You also have another one in Japan, and then the last one is Loba Linda, California. I know that's a throws yeah, everybody Linda, off. Yep. Loma, Loma Linda or your yeah. Linda? No, Loma Linda. Loma Linda. Oh, okay. oh man, that's, that's my, 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 my heart yeah. hospital. Well, that's Loma a good Linda, like, It's not like ranch farmland a lot of... No, the reason why is because a huge number of seven-day Adventists live there, and seven-day Adventists are known to be plant-based. Are you aware of that? I, I, game. Yeah, okay. so most seven-day Adventists don't eat meat. I'm sorry, what is a seven-day Adventist? It's just a denomination of Christianity. Okay. Yeah, so that's why they're one of the blue zones i got you and the blue zones share a lot of different characteristics i lived in okinawa japan one of those blue zones for four and a half years and got to see these people in the village in okinawa japan for decades was the number one blue zone in terms of having the largest number of centenarians people who live to 100 i know our audience is listening and wondering what the hell a blue zone is because i know i am yeah i'm picking up what you're putting down yeah what's a blue zone it's just simply a region or area the five that I just named that people live to 100. They have the largest number of centenarians, people who live to 100. They primarily eat plant-based and they have they share other different philosophies as well too, like community, movement, community, oh. movement certain eating practices mm-hmm. without being connected or knowing, you know, mm-hmm. knowing each other. They just share these characteristics. Mm-hmm. So Okinawa, Japan was one of those. So that's why I chose to move there. And as I'm living there for four and a half years, going to this village and being able to see how they live on a daily basis, what they eat, seeing people who are 97, 102, climb trees, walk up hills, garden, etc. It's beautiful. What I noticed was their lifestyle was just like my great grandmother who lived to 105. Okay. As opposed to my grandmother who lived to 67 and died at 67. Okay. My great grandmother, they had an outhouse. You had to go outside to use the bathroom. No electricity. Okay. No electricity means what? No refrigerator. Everything fresh. Everything fresh out of the backyard, the side yard, the front yard. Farm table. When we got sick or something like that, guess what they did? Went to the backyard, the side yard, the front yard, gave you a remedy. So my great grandmother lived just like the people in Okinawa, Japan. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Barely ate any meat because you can't chop a chicken up every day. And even if you did, where are you going to put the rest of it? There's no refrigerator. You see what I'm saying? So primarily Monday through Saturday, my great grandmother ate mostly plants. She was plant-based. On Sunday, that was the day she probably ate meat when the pastor came over from church and they had a big feast. And that was the lifestyle of most people. Because back in the day, you had to go to a butcher to get meat. You didn't go to like, a, there was no supermarkets. You see what I'm saying? Meat was expensive. It was the most expensive thing that you could buy. 
And so living in this blue zone for four and a half years, it just showed me like, okay, that's what I miss. I was supposed to be living like my great grandmother, okay? But I was living the lifestyle of my grandmother, which is why I got diagnosed with high blood pressure at the age of 16. And so, you know, that is what the blue zone is about. You said we're all different. Yeah. But is there a certain way, even though we're all different, is there a certain way that our people should be eating? Yeah. You know what I mean? Is there a specific diet? And I know, again, everyone is different. Everyone's yeah. body's digestive system, all that stuff is different. Yeah. But generally speaking, is there a, like a specific diet that our people should stick to? The foundation of what you should be eating is fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. That's the foundation fruits, of what you should be. Seeds. You get everything you need from that. I give it, you know, the only few things that they say that you, you get from meat, that they say you don't get from plants, they say you don't get protein. You do. Unless I'm like magic, because I have not eaten meat in 13 years, and I'm 6'2", and I'm 220 pounds. So you can get your protein from plants, all right? They also say you don't get vitamin B12. Well, guess what? That's not true either. Vitamin B12 actually comes from a bacteria in the soil. It doesn't come from the actual animal. The animal eats the grass and gets that bacteria from the soil that's in the grass, and then we eat the animal, and we get the secondary vitamin B12. You see what I'm saying? But you can get vitamin B12. And most of the patients that I would see come into the clinic to get a prescription for vitamin B12, most of them ate meat. I'm just keeping it real. Most of them, ha most meat eaters have that deficiency too. And so those are the two primary things. And then some other B vitamins. But again, I think it's really important to know and understand if you don't have those deficiencies, then you don't have any problems. If you have those deficiencies, you can use supplements. But the foundation of what you should be eating, you have to have fiber in your diet. And the only place you can get fiber is from plants. You have to have digestive. There's no fiber in fruits? Well, that's plants. Okay, okay. okay. You see what I'm saying? Yep. So fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, that's where fiber comes from. You have to have fiber. Fiber feeds the good bacteria in your gut, which is responsible for 80% of your immunity. So if you don't eat fiber, you don't feed that bacteria, it doesn't produce immunity for you. You see what I'm saying? That's why if you're on something like a carnivore diet, down the line, you're going to be inflamed one, but you're going to have, you're probably going to end up with some autoimmune yeah. issues down the line as well too. Oh, let's go there. Would you say that if you eat meat, or would you say that they are injecting hormones into the meat? Nah, I don't have to say it. It just is. It's, it is what it is. Yeah. yeah so, you know. <laughs> I don't got to say and shit. It, and, <laughs> no, <laughs> what I'm going to say. Just, like, it just look like me, dog. <laughs> yeah. Just think about how big these animals are. Yep. You know, like, I remember being a kid having my first buffalo wing. It was like this. Yep. Now they're like this. Yep. <laughs> yeah, them wings okay. going crazy. You know what I'm saying? So, recombinant gro um, bovine growth hormone, they put that in cows. And when you eat the cow, you eat the hormones. You eat everything that cow eats. So this is why so many people have hormonal issues too, because mm -hmm. now you're not only eating the oh, hormones that were point. injected into the cow, you're also eating the natural hormones from that cow too. Okay. So if you have hormonal issues, it could be because of that too. Mm -hmm. So if I'm a guy who's in my mid twenties, I'm active, I'm in my prime, I'm hitting the iron, I'm feeling good. But man, last night it just wouldn't get up with Shorty. Yeah. Right. And then man, this shit actually happened to me a month ago too. Yeah. I was I was telling you, bro. I was ready. Right. Could that be an effect from the hormones that is injected in the meat if I'm eating meat? It can be in the hormones that are injected in there, but it also can be most of the animals today are fed like soy and corn. Full estrogen? Well, the soy and corn is just cheap feed. You know, it's cheaper to feed them this. So, you know, a cow is supposed to eat grass. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it's cheaper. To feed you, the corn. you don't see cows out grazing anymore. That's why when you see the milk cartons, they'll have a cow like on a pasture, but you never see that anymore mm -hmm. because they're not, they're in these lives stock farms okay they're locked up inside of places and so as a result they're feeding them now instead of allowing them to just eat grass and they're feeding them genetically modified corn and soy is going to be sprayed with pesticides herbicides and insecticides the number two insecticide or pesticide is atrazine atrazine is an endocrine disruptor it will increase estrogen in the body mm -hmm. okay for women estrogen dominance looks like endometriosis and breast cancer for men it looks like man boobs it looks like lowered testosterone it looks mm -hmm. like muscle wasting it looks like body hair loss you understand there's a complete feminization of men today i'm saying from a hormonal standpoint mm -hmm. i'm not even talking about from a personal personality yeah. standpoint i'm saying from a hormonal standpoint most men have elevated levels of estrogen in their body and so they can't figure out why they can't get motivated testosterone is what makes you motivated to do things mm -hmm. okay yeah. they can't figure out why they can't grow muscles. Testosterone makes you grow muscles.